I'm Porter Brooks and I am your host. Everyone's coming to the party. Don't miss it. Well, I'm Porter Brooks, your host, and today is all about a memory for me, but it is a contemporary cassoulet, which is a great, fun French word to say, and it really is everything good mixed into one pot. But being that we're in an urban space and life has changed, I'm going to mix things up a little bit, so don't get too upset if I'm not perfectly traditional. That's what this episode is all about in a real old Dutch oven. If you don't have a cassoulet pan, this is the one that works. This was my aunt's Dutch oven, which is why it looks all burnt around the sides. And that's where all the flavor is from. I'm first going to start with just my mirepoix. You've heard me talk about this before. This is our carrots, onions, and our celery. And I had the store chop all that up for me so I didn't have to hassle with it. We're going to get those brownie. You see this quackety quack over here. This is a duck. My brother and father used to hunt duck all the time in Colorado. And I remember picking out the uh, buckshot when my brother would cook the duck for us. But we are going to take our beautiful organic duck and we're going to cut it into four or eight different pieces. Now, traditionally on a cassoulet, you put everything in one pot, but I want to render some of this fat off. So I'm using a small little broiler pan. I'm going to cut off some of the dark meat and I've got my poultry scissors right in hand if I need to employ those. This is a good technique to learn yourself or you can have your meat market take care of that for you. I'm gonna lay those pieces on there. I think probably two will be enough. For a large group, I would normally do about eight pieces. And you just wanna find that joint and go right in there and cut and then turn that out. Just like that. For my vegetarians in the audience, I know you're not going to like that part, but it is part of the process. I'm trying to reduce some of the fat and add some of the dark meat. So I'm going to go right into the thigh. And again, I'll turn that, just crack that bone. Cassoulet has so many memories for me. I used to be a architectural antiquities importer years ago, which meant I spent my days going through old farmhouses and chateaus in, in France and throughout the Mediterranean. And at the end of it, we would all go to Klingencourt, the Marche, the Marche Pousse, which is where all the little antique stands are in France. And there was this little place, once all the, they were called stands in the alleys, would close. Everybody, all the owners, would go to this one place and my friend Christian would go with me completely French and we would have the cassoulet. All right, this is looking beautiful. So we just want to soften that mirepoix. Now a traditional cassoulet, you're going to let dry beans soak overnight, but I've gone ahead and gotten an urban assistance with this and I'm using four 16 ounce cans of Northern Whites or cannellini beans. Completely saves about eight hours of time and all the flavor is still there. So it's a speed scratch version of getting us where we need to be. We'll mix those in. If you've never seen a cassoulet pot, it's like a big dome and it's got a lid on it, but I'm gonna make it stove top and then transfer it to a serving dish. All right, I want to drizzle my duck, which is already patted dry with a little bit of olive oil. And I'm gonna pop that in the oven to get that crispy while the rest of this cooks. About 400 for about 10 to 15 minutes. You're just trying to render the fat off the top there. All right, well, it wouldn't be cassoulet without some white wine and typically just about a cup nice dry white wine and I like to add a little bit more fat with a tablespoon of butter and then to finish off those beans we're gonna have some 
chicken or vegetable stock. Just about three quarters of a cup will do it. All right, let's mix all that together and bring our heat up. The only thing that I've ever had with cassoulet as a side dish is just a big chunk of crunchy, crunchy French bread. My friend Christian used to take out this giant knife, which looked like a hunter's knife, and open it up, and he would eat each of the sausage pieces with his knife, which is kind of what I'm gonna do right now. So we start with our beans in place, and I've gone ahead and I found these beautiful chicken sausages just to try to change up the meat. I'm gonna put one pound of nice, big, chunky sausages right into my pan, my cassoulet pan, always fun. Red or white wine with this one, but white on the inside. So that is our fourth one. This is a chunky, very, very hearty, hearty meal. You want everybody to get large, large bites. Okay, and I found this beautiful wheel. Do you see how it came perfectly pinned of sausages? that I want to just unravel, and I can use my scissors to just put them in my great cassoulet. Let's do nice long pieces, just like that. That way when it comes out, we'll have the beans on the bottom, and we'll have these beautiful long pieces of herbed sausage. You could use kibasa, all different types, but I like things that have a lot of flavor in them and that are very interesting that pinwheel is just about perfect to go right on the top. Taking that skewer out, last one in. We'll add just a little bit of tomato paste or ketchup. And then of course the main flavor, which are those classic French herbs, a large amount. So many beans in there, they're gonna absorb all of that and a very, large pinch or three of the salt. Let's mix that all up. We're gonna cover this and bring it to a boil. Look at that. Colors and flavors all coming through on this great modern cassoulet. I'm Porter Brooks and when we come back, I'll have this boiling and I'll show you how we prep it for the oven. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. Well, if you're just joining us, I'm Porter Brooks and it's all about a contemporary cassoulet today. Let's take a look at how our beautiful beans and sausages are coming together in my aunt's old Dutch oven. That looks exactly how we need it to be. We're gonna let that just sit there until we transfer it to our baking oven. Now, I said earlier that few things are ever served on the side when it comes to cassoulet, but one thing that I've really learned to love is a really good coleslaw. I've got some help from the store on this one. And I'm gonna add the rustic elements to this basic slaw with some whole grain mustard. We're just gonna mix these two items together and I'm gonna serve this on a small plate sitting next to my bowl of cassoulet. It really is that simple. Black pepper is gonna give it a pop of color, which we'll put right there. I can hear our ducks crackling in the oven, rendering down that fat. Okay, whoops, there goes that one. All right, so we'll set that aside to serve with the cassoulet. And in the meantime, I just wanna add a few final elements, which are cloves of garlic, whole cloves, and I like to put a couple of mushrooms right on the top. I know that that is not classic, but I'm trying to mix things up a little bit. And two small whole onions, I put these in, actually sliced once with the skins on, right on top. We'll cover this, and we're gonna let this simmer. You know, this entire dish can be done ahead of time if you'd like. And now for my dessert, I'm all about easy entertaining and I'm gonna show you one of my biggest fake outs of all time. All right, I have two high-end quality quarts of vanilla ice cream that I've allowed to melt. Put one in and 
then we'll just pop the top. We'll put the other one in. Now, what I'm making is a contemporary floating island. If you're not familiar with floating island, it is the classic French dessert with the custard in the bottom of the bowl and these beautiful meringue chunks floating on top. With my melted vanilla ice cream, I'm gonna put it right into a really fancy dressy bowl, probably about, this is a half cup server, and then these beautiful store-bought macaroons, I'm just gonna float nice and colorful right on top. How's that? That looks beautiful. All right, let's check the cassoulet. Looking good. Now, I'm not using a traditional cassoulet pan, as I mentioned, but I am using a classic earthenware terracotta that was imported. We need to transfer all this beautiful beans and sausages into our cassoulet pan as safely as possible. The beans are gonna come right on the top. So to begin, we wanna put the large pieces to the side. I'll show you why it's gonna make sense once our duck comes out. And then we'll be able to actually dump the beans. Look at our chicken sausages, our mushrooms. That's gonna add a really different texture once we're deep inside this fantastic cassoulet. There we go. All right. And then we can pour this over the top. Mm, look at that. Smelling oh, memories of me and Christian eating cassoulet. Okay. And of course, the last element is going to be our crispy duck. Let me pull that out of the oven. There it is on the broiler pan. Grab some tongs for this. And you'll just want to lay those pieces right on the top of the cassoulet. Back in the oven, this is gonna go. Now remember, these beans were already softened. So this can cook up really covered in just about 20 or 30 minutes and ready for your guest. Let's make that really beautiful. Get a nice chunk of that onion up there and a big piece of the sausage. When in doubt, dig in. There it is. All right. I think that's fantastic. Okay, into the oven we go. Look at this beautiful contemporary cassoulet. You want almost all that liquid to absorb. We'll check it in just a few minutes. And when I come back, I'm gonna create the classic French cafe tablescape, but we're gonna do it right here on the island in my kitchen. A perfect way to entertain your friends with dish towels and little Frenchy Frenchy bowls and big chunky knives and forks and spoons to eat all things great. If you want all these recipes, these tricks, these tips and the technique, do what I've been doing. I've been over here on my tablet, Check me out online. Tweet me at the Porter Brooks. Everything's gonna be right there. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Well, if you're just joining me, I'm Porter Brooks and I've created this contemporary cassoulet. I'm adding the whole grain mustard slaw to the sides of my plates. Again, I know it's not perfectly traditional, but that's the whole point of uh, using great urban spaces for great taste. All right, so the slaw is in, and I wanted to tell you just a little bit about my tablescape that I've done today. First of all, I've gone as classic French to the memories as I possibly can draw back on a great cafe plate beautiful French tete Leon bowls where we have the sides and the faces of the lions on each one. And because cassoulet is such a caveman rustic dish, I decided we'd use these hand carved giant wooden spoons, which I've set right there. I know it's just a joke for my guests, but I think it's gonna be kind of fun. You can see our floating island, our faux floating island, which looks beautiful. I've got three, three, and three here all the way down. And to make it simple, I'm rotating 
basic French tea cloth tea towels and I'm just going from a red to a blue to a red to blue because that's all I have. Now in any situation when you're having cassoulet, now at any time I've ever had cassoulet in the restaurant, they had one of these, what I would call like this bread guillotine where you slice off the pieces of bread and there's always some lady in the back that is just doing this as fast as you can imagine. Look at this piece. I got this in France years ago and it's still one of my most favorite conversation pieces. So as they would, the bread is pretty much just laid all across the table. I remember being in the Pousse and the markets and they, them having these long, almost picnic tables with benches that everybody would get into. And the other thing that was extremely, extremely common was the idea of the pitchers of wine or the pichet. Depending on who you were dining with, some people wanted more red, some people wanted more white, but they were always tables. So this is exactly how it would come. Usually a large pichet of the white wine. That cassoulet is smelling amazing. I'm gonna have to get over there and get that out for you to take a look at. And then of course, for the people who want the Van Rouge or the red, just a wonderful red table wine. What a great way to entertain. Everybody reaches out and helps themselves, keep the expenses really down, and everything has interest, even just a few little daisies that we have right here. All right, so the piece de la resistance, let me grab my cassoulet. And you can see my contemporary version of what I remember being a wonderful, wonderful way to eat and to end a very big day. All right, so what did we get here? You see how the duck pieces are all nice and crispy? You can hear that crispiness right there, and there are our sausages. And look at that beautiful color right there with the quarter. There's some of our chicken sausages and our beautiful beans and sausage. Mm, I wanna take a big bite. Wow, it is so perfumey, it's fantastic. Now, I know I'm gonna need a big scoop for this. So how to get the cassoulet to the dish. Set your showpiece aside, that beautiful hand-carved olive wood from my collection. And you wanna go deep in the bottom of your cassoulet looking for a beautiful chunk of beans. Nice big spoonful, there come some sausages. Look at that. Let's do mushrooms right on top. Oh, a gar garlic clove right in there. And I think we're gonna take that wing and set it right there. And how about just a portion of that sausage? To me, that says cassoulet the French way. Set that out there. And a little bit of the bread. All right, let's keep going. Red or white, that is the big question when it comes to how do you like your wine with your cassoulet? And again, I've had it so many different ways, it just really is more a matter of what I'm in the mood for. I like to splash a little bit of white wine sometimes right over the top. Beautiful mushroom on that one. Let's find a nice confit, a duck leg. Oh, so sweet, so wonderful. We've got that mushroom right there. And let's add just a splash of white wine right over the top. All right, other culinary flavors that were always available at a cassoulet table, of course, is the French gray salt, which I'm gonna add just a bit to our slaw. You can see those two. And the amazing French lavender. I love this element of flavor added to something traditional. A modern twist on a very, very classic dish with the French cassoulet. The French cassoulet, it's getting hard to say as the day goes on and on. Well, to finish our floating island, which I think came out wonderfully, I'm gonna put just a piece of mint on each one. I love having all this mint readily available, plus having it growing on the wall. Look how good that looks with the colors there. We'll do three. Lay that one down and four. All right, this guy we're gonna have to serve. Now, 
Let's get some taste out of the way. I think the first thing I'm really after right out of here is the beautiful broth in the cassoulet. Hold tight, hold tight, hold tight. Oh my gosh. Wow, what a flavor. This is a little bit more liquid than I typically have, so you'll wanna let it cook down and have those beans absorb. Let's see if we can get in there. Now, I told you about my friend Christian, who had this big giant knife, and he would take a whole chunk of it. He'd open his knife, and he'd eat the sausage right off the edge of the knife. Mmm, beautiful flavors. Warm through and through. Excellent. Let's try our other farmer sausage. This is the one that's heavily herbed. I'm gonna dip that in there. Here we go. Mm. Wow, that one is really earthy. Beautiful, with just a sip of white. Cassoulet all night. I'm Porter Brooks. I hope you enjoy this entire menu. It's so easy. Make some contemporary cassoulet. Entertain. Check me out at The Porter Brooks and online. And I will see you next time when I entertain the world one day at a time. Cheers.